Hi, I'm Karen. And I'm Zach. And welcome back to another breaking episode of the Control Cabinet Classroom. Today, we're talking industrial circuit breakers. What are they and how do they function? So let's break it down. Like that. Okay, so everyone basically knows what a circuit breaker is, right? There's a whole panel full of them in your house that looks like this. If you've ever plugged in too many things at once and maybe turned on a hair dryer, chances are you've managed to trip a breaker, causing the power to go out. And if you're like me, I'm sure you said a few choice words as you made your way down to the basement or the garage to reset it. But have you ever stopped to think about what's really happening in that situation? The breakers in your house trip when a circuit is overloaded or there's too much current, so that everything you have plugged into that circuit doesn't get damaged and the wires won't burn up. So just like the breakers in your house, industrial circuit breakers are designed to protect the wiring and equipment they're connected to in the event of an overload. Here's some examples of industrial circuit breakers. Like I said, they're similar to the breakers in your house, but as you can see, there are some differences. For example, these are DIN rail mounted, which means that they can sit on an industrial control cabinet. But more importantly, they have several trip profiles or trip curves in relation to time and current, and each has a distinct mechanical characteristics. So to start, there are lots of different types of circuit breakers, but in the interest of time, we're gonna focus on the three most common types used in industrial applications. Number one, thermal breakers, which, like their name suggests, are tripped by excessive heat. Number two, thermal magnetic breakers, which are tripped by heat and electromagnetism. And three, electronic breakers, which can be configured to trip at a very precise current level. The key takeaway is that each type has a slightly different response, so they are used to protect different things. Hang on, Karen. Let's take a break from what we're talking about to talk about overloads. I see what you did. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thought that up myself. <laughs> overloads can be short-term or long-term, and the breaker used to protect a device should be chosen appropriately. Some equipment, like a large motor, has a high inrush current when started. You don't want to use a sensitive breaker in this case because it's too fast and will trip every time you start up. This phenomenon is called nuisance tripping. So how exactly do these breakers work? Well, let's start with thermal because they're the easiest to understand. As their name suggests, thermal breakers respond to heat. And of course, as we all know, current generates heat. So these breakers are, have a slower trip curve because it takes a little while for heat to build up. So they are ideal for using on large motors, transformers, solenoids, anything with a very high inrush current. Inside these breakers, there is a small piece of metal called a bimetallic strip that expands when it gets hot. This expansion then causes an internal switch to flip, which essentially disconnects the circuit or breaks it. Hence the name circuit breaker. So now that you know that, Zach, you can use that as an icebreaker at your next party. Why do you think I have so many friends, Karen? So after the overload is cleared, the metal strip cools back down and the breaker can be reset like this. Sometimes you have to wait a few seconds for the heat to dissipate because it's a thermal breaker. Next up, thermal magnetic. So these have the same thermal delay, but also have a magnetic element, which makes them ideal for fast response at high current, like what happens when you have a short circuit. So the beauty of these is that they are good for long-term and short-term overloads, and they're used just about everywhere. The breakers in your house, for example, are thermal magnetic, as are these, and they're used just about everywhere. Finally, let's talk about electronic circuit breakers. Electronic circuit breakers are set to trip at an exact point. They combine thermal magnetic but also add in a microprocessor and are ideal for extremely sensitive or expensive equipment like telecommunications equipment or printed circuit boards. We're going to go through this in examples, so let's set it up. All right, Karen, why don't you show us how this works? So here we have a, a demo case with several different types of electronic breakers installed and wired up. Um, for the purposes of today's demo, all we're going to do is simulate a short, and you can see how instantly this trips, showing the speed of the trip. And it also gives you indication that something is wrong. So once you reset the short, all you have to do is press this button, and the circuit breaker is reset. And you can instantly see, not only on the breaker, but remotely, that it's protecting the circuit again. Excellent. Thanks, Karen. Right, let's put this away. So, as you can see, there are lots of advantages to using electronic breakers, including the remote monitoring we just looked at. There are disadvantages too, though, mainly cost, because those microprocessors do add a little bit to the bottom line. 
And because they are so sensitive, they must be strategically placed in order to avoid nuisance tripping. So let's recap. A circuit breaker is essentially a switch that activates when there's too much current. There are three main types used in the industry, thermal, thermal magnetic, and electronic. They're all used to protect different things, but they must be used appropriately or very, very bad things could happen. So that's it. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but we're ready for a break. Yeah. So before you go, please give us a big old thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button so you catch all our new videos, and we'll see you next time.